Hey, this is David Johnson, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. I thought there was a chance because of the double header. Ah, uh, I see. That you I would bring see. it, but that's okay. It's all right. You got to leave the people wanting a little bit more. No, I I think you've done that now and we're we're ready, Mike, for, for the next big Big game. Uh, welcome into the show, Andy, Mike, and Jason, the Fantasy Footballers, Monday, October 19th. We get some afternoon football today here on the West Coast. Two o'clock, mm. Chiefs, Bills, that'll be a fun one. And then our hometown squad, the Cardinals, against Andy Dalton in Monday Night Football. Mm. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, that'll be – Yeah, I don't know what to expect from that game. I think it should actually be a pretty good, fun game. I think there's going to be a lot of fantasy points. You know what's different about this situation with Andy Dalton is it wasn't a cool, it wasn't a cool thing to support Andy Dalton and believe in Andy Dalton and defend Andy Dalton for a very, very, very long time. But right now, it seems very like posh to be like, yeah, Andy Dalton's great. This is no, this is no slouch. This is a really good Pro Bowler. Well, he's a he's a good backup. I mean, this is the underdog story now. He's no longer the starter. <laughs> He's the backup. Who Same was... performance in different yes. contexts is a completely different outcome. Context right? is everything. Yeah. No, it's it's absolutely true. You always root for the backup. When he was a starter, man, he was a loser. But now, oh, I'm all in, pushing my chips in. Who Let's wins go, the game? Andy. Who wins the game tonight? Are you worried about Arizona being able to take yeah, care I, of Andy Dalton? I, I, you know, I believe both teams are overrated and not as good as we hope and desire so it, it'll be a real slugfest of who's going to lose <laughs> okay all right that's one expectation you can find us on youtube youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers if you want to watch the show you can subscribe click the bell uh we have a giveaway right now we're giving away a signed uh, kenny g jersey over at footclangiveaway.com you can Enter for free over there. Many of you have already, but that's going to go for the next month or so, and then we'll give that thing away so you can enter at footclangiveaway.com. Nice weekend of football. It is Monday. We need to get sophisticated. We need to mm. react. We it was, it was a bizarre weekend. Uh, Brooks, we had probably a few hundred Monday Punday entries once again. Oh, yeah. Maybe a th Thousands. Maybe a thousands. Whoa. Maybe, Maybe a, thousand. a thousands. <laughs> That's what I think. Maybe a said. thousands, yeah. All right. Uh you pick the best though. Here we go. <laughs> oh, I guess we'll start on a down note. Uh Alexander Sadison. Alexander should a Sadison. <laughs> Derek Hinley <laughs> Okay, Mike. Uh, so Mike Gusicki. Uh, honk honk. Mike. Goose Eggy. Oh. Mm, yeah. And Mike Mathens. Mm, yeah, so sad. Psych Evans. <laughs> oh, yes. Tanya. We've got Tulio Jones. That one's my favorite. Yeah, that one's nice. Tulio. <laughs> what about this one? Uh, Al Borna won't like it, but Error Rogers. Oh. Control yeah. out delete. Oh. <laughs> oh, I don't like this one. I just saw it. Odell Rectum. Oh, oh Junior? There's no Junior in there? Nearly killed him. <laughs> DeAndre Gift. Oh, he's looking Ooh, good. Yes, He's yes. looking good. Oh, Blooper what? cup. Blooper. Bloops. That's a... He honestly... He kept dropping the ball. Ooh, and then we all took a star voyage on the Millennium Fulgum. <laughs> Engage. That's the best we can... That's the wrong star series, Jason. We're still in space. Uh, I'll, I'll lean in on this one. Juju Whiff Schuster. Ooh. Justin Jeffer stud. Justin Jeffer fun. Mm. Okay. All right. All right. You can handle it. <laughs> Slay Burton. And yay Burton, because we've got uh, we've got a tight end in Indianapolis that's not Mo Alley Cox. Mm. How are you feeling about that that uh, Trey Boo Boo, Trey Burton action from the Colts, Jason? <laughs> I love you've, you've been over there trying to tell people 
that Trey Burton will be a thing. And he's a thing. And he's going to continue to be a thing. If he's healthy, he's on a team that utilizes tight ends. Mo Alley Cox isn't active. Absolutely. Trey Boo Boo. Well, and did what what was the final conclusion of uh Jack Doyle? It looked like he hurt his little bitty baby hands. Did they actually get hurt? I, Did he I, get a, a boo-boo on the baby hands? I believe he was still in the game after that, but he was definitely – it was hard to see because they're so small. Right, I, yeah, tiny injury. Right, it was like the camera was zooming in, but you couldn't really tell. But he did <laughs> He did hurt his hands. It's so terrible. <laughs> the, the the disparity of perception for all the tight ends on this team. You've got Moali Cox. Oh, he's so big. <laughs> and then you got Trey Boo-Boo, who's just been a disaster <laughs> for years. Has one good game. Love And him. then Jack Doyle, the like – the His hands are too small. So <laughs> it's not our fault. Okay, yeah. uh, I I didn't give him the baby. He hands. only ended up one for twelve. I feel like I saw him try to catch five passes in this game. But you catch with those hands. <laughs> yeah, it's difficult. Let's uh let's get into the rewind. Weekly rewind. This is the Mike Wright special here to start the weekly rewind. Miles Sanders exited. Well, that, with, that part is not my special. Well, it's your special in the sense that you've uh, you're leaning on him in some leagues and. Oh yeah, I mean it's it sucks. He's got a knee injury. Mm -hmm. Zach Ertz exited with an ankle injury. Both are getting an MRI today. What is the latest you've heard on Miles Sanders since you're so attached? So the we don't have a lot of news yet, but the the Twitter doctors were out trying to you know look at the mechanism of the injury looking at the timeline of their games and when their bye week aligns. But if you have Miles Sanders, I would be prepared to be without him for at least three weeks, at least. Yikes. That is unfortunate. That's a team that uh, can sustain some injuries, though, because they haven't had to deal with any. Right. Yeah. Yes. A lot yeah. of depth there. Also, Zach I can't believe they almost came back in that game. We were making fun of you, as we should have been yes. doing during oh, that. Oh, yeah. Uh, Ravens Eagles game, and we're saying stop taking almost <laughs> upsets against the Ravens, and then they almost upset them. It was incredible. And you could see the writing on the wall. We're like, okay, they score the touchdown to tie, and they don't get the two point conversion. That'll be a perfect almost upset. Also, uh, Zach Ertz currently the tight end twenty one on the week. Okay, <laughs> Mike. I, look, I'm Mike, not. I'm not saying. I'm just just saying. Just. Throwing stats out there, that's, numbers. That's six weeks of Zach Ertz and one week inside the top ten for him. I really don't know whether to be impressed with or disappointed in Carson Wentz. I feel like every play. Oh, it's both. Do you know that when, like, when you, uh, let's say you you did a hundred yard sprint, right? And at the very end, you're very tired, and you start to kind of fall after you cross the finish line, and you're right. like barely catching your feet. Mm -hmm. I feel like he plays the entire game in that mode. Like he's about to fall over, he's about to get tackled. Almost wins the game. Yeah, he he actually wears uh, heavier shoes than most people do, mm. and I don't I don't know if you. I, He's I got like one thing. of those training vests on exactly. underneath, but it's all just on the shoes. I thought maybe they tied the shoelaces together, and sure. then they made him play quarterback. All right, Mark Ingram, ankle injury, came back out on the field, left again. Yeah, he was he was in and out, but it's something to monitor here for waivers. It's always a big deal when you hear something like that, and you have somebody like J.K. Dobbins behind him it's with not, that much talent? It's not just Dobbins, man. The Gus bus was – he he saw a lot of opportunity. No, you're right, and he was uh, he was double digits in our league of record scoring because you saw what happened when, like, Cam Akers gets banged up. All of a sudden, Daryl Henderson comes in, and he's just established himself. Right. It might just take a little ankle tweak to yep. move in the next guy. Raheem Mostert exited with an ankle injury. He looked like – he, he wanted to come back in so bad. And Raheem Mostert, I mean, we've had the discussions several times in the office of running backs that running backs that actually matter and change a team. Raheem Mostert is so good, man. He is he is he makes correct decisions. His athleticism is always on display. The one run where and he doesn't look like a power back, but he had the run the run where he came, you know, running to the outside and he sought out the contact of two players. The, the run should have been a four-yard run. Instead, he pushed two defenders and turned this in from a four-yard into a nine- or a ten-yard run. He is, It was I incredible. can't believe the NFL whiffed so badly and, and on most and, and plenty of teams out there actually had him on the roster yes. and, and saw him practicing day in, day out. It, you know, Jarek McKinnon is a, is a fine running back, but you look at those two guys when they're on the field and you're like, man. They miss Mostert I mean, because he hits those those holes so quick. He might just want it more than other people. 
Yeah. Like there's there's a mentality thing of of playing football that you can't really and, uh, quantify. Raheem Mostert's inspiring Travis Fulgham's ascension <laughs> because when teams pass sure. over you, release you, sign you, right. release you, you get a little uh, Mike Davis. You get a chip on your shoulder, and all of a sudden you run a little bit harder. Yeah. I do worry a little bit about this this ankle injury though because he yeah. was he was ruled out very quickly. Uh, I got an alert. Uh, they they didn't talk about it on the broadcast, but I got an alert pretty pretty quickly after he went off the field that he was ruled out for the rest of the game. Well, you and, knew he came back in after the injury. He came back in and played. Yes, and then you're saying after that. Yes, and then was ruled out. And so I I just you know I guess maybe it's Christian McCaffrey that's giving me the fears of oh he had a great game and then at the end he kind of tweaked his ankle and then all of a sudden CMC PTSD. Yes, that's yeah. right. Yeah, uh, Devontae yeah, Parker <laughs> suffered a groin injury in the second half. Yeah. Parker has become – I mean, these are becoming frequent for him, yeah. having little tweaks and playing through them, and we'll see what happens. Uh, one thing to note there is that that game was out of reach in 20 seconds. It was it was like 21 to nothing in the blink of an eye. Who did the Dolphins play again? Uh, I think they had a bye week. They just uh, decided correct. to score points on nobody. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Is he going to get fired this week? Brooks, can you let us know? No way. I don't. I don't know. I mean, what? He would have been fired already. Brooks, do you know? I mean, are you taking over? I'll let you know. All right. <sighs> Adam Gaze. Yeah, Maybe yeah. he can make it for a few more weeks. We need the content. Johnu Smith exited in the third quarter mm. with an ankle injury. Uh, he was not heavily involved early in this game, uh, but he's been one of the better tight ends for fantasy football. So. You know, this is the dance you do with tight ends in fantasy. You you deal with injury, and you have to pivot to some of these players that emerged over the last week. Maybe it's Trey Boo Boo. Maybe it's Irv Smith Jr. Maybe it's Rob Gronkowski. But maybe it's the the other tight end on the Tennessee Titans, Ferkser. Yeah, who came through with a monster. I think he's the number one tight end of the week. That's right. Currently, there's a couple more games. He's always good for a few of those surprise games mm -hmm. every year. Uh, the Broncos reportedly won't discipline Melvin Gordon after he was charged with a DUI. He did miss week six due to illness. Yeah, he had strep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we've got the two games tonight. Last minute news there. Zach Moss is expected to play, removed from the injury report. And then John Brown is questionable. Do you guys have a sense on whether John Brown will be, let's not say just on the field, but start worthy for your fantasy teams? It's sketchy. Like, would you just shift... Right now, if you could get Gabriel Davis, would you just put Gabriel Davis in there because he's kind of giving you a baseline as opposed to the risk, or would you put John Brown in? I would probably put John Brown in. I, I, you know, you temper your expectations, but he's been so important to the offense. Okay, anything else we should talk about here in the news? No, let's get into the studs. Yeah. This week's fantasy stud muffins. Deshaun Watson, have yourself a game. That game was insane. That was a wonderful game. We it, have, we have, just for some context, we have eight televisions at the studio and then one middle TV. So we have nine TVs. And because the NFL is so amazing, they chose to front load the entire, there were nine games. So ridiculous, man. And we run red zone in the middle. So we had to choose one game to not show. And we're like looking at all the matchups and we're like, yeah, let's just not show the Tennessee Houston one. And that quickly changed. Yeah, <laughs> well, it, it, was it was the right choice for like half the game. And then no, then it was, <laughs> then it was insanity. Was Deshaun Watson sandbagging for a while to get Bill O'Brien out of there? <laughs> Cause he looks great. All Conspiracy of a sudden. Conspiracy theory. This was the schedule. I mean, we said it before the season began, Kansas city, Baltimore, Pittsburgh, Minnesota to start the year. You know, at the time, we didn't know Minnesota would be quite as bad on defense, but mm -hmm. Casey, Baltimore, Pittsburgh, sandbagging or not, the result would be the same in those games. Uh, but this is back-to-back -back monster performances from Deshaun Watson. It's wonderful news for Will Fuller managers. It's wonderful news for Brandon Cook's managers. Darren Fells, David Johnson even had a nice week. He Randall was, Cobb, everybody. It was, yeah, there was plenty to go around. 28 for 37, 335 and four. Big plays, sustained drives it was what you wanted to see minus the victory so big week for Watson confidence levels rising Matt Ryan Matt Julio Jones Ryan <laughs> I don't I mean it's like we have rule 86 from days gone by right. Matt Ryan needs rule 11 I mean yes. it's if Julio's not out there 
Matt Ryan is not comfortable. Uh, it, agreed. I but mean, when he is out there, he's absolutely great. You look at this season as a whole. Matt Ryan started the year on fantasy fire, and then all of a sudden Julio gets banged up, goes out, and Matt Ryan stinks, and now he's back, and and there you go. So it it's it's really simple. Sometimes fantasy is difficult, and sometimes it's easy. If Julio's out there, Matt Ryan's a okay. Detroit, Carolina, the next two weeks from Matt Ryan suddenly looking very strong in those matchups. Carson Wentz, uh, we talked about the game. It was ugly. It was also not that ugly for Wentz in the end. Tannehill continues Whew. his dominant performances. My goodness. 30 for 41, 364 and 4. I don't know about you guys. There's nothing I enjoy watching more than a play-action pass offense, to be honest. Like when you have an established running game and you can – I mean, with Gurley and the Rams a yeah, couple years ago, yep. it, you know, the defense has to make a decision on every play, and you lose or you lose against Tennessee right now. If you don't double down on Derek, he's oh. going to go down the field. And then if you do, Ryan Tannehill can pick you apart with A.J. Brown. So this was an impressive performance, 364-4. and four. I think for a lot of fantasy players – this was the game that maybe cemented Tannehill's in every week start, no matter what's going on. Now you got Pittsburgh next week. That's that's tough. That, that what are you be doing? Is man. he is he locked into your lineup? Nope. Mm, TBD. Nope. TBD. Yeah, I, I mean, never it, mind about what I previously said. It, it's one of those things where you know it depends on the alternative. But if I had a good alternative, I would I would use it. But you know, I think he's going to be a low end one probably quarterback 13 14 so i I'm, I'm hoping that i can pivot but we'll we'll see it's a tough matchup man yeah pittsburgh was dominant this week making uh, an injured baker more injured oh, uh, the and the the titans sounds like they did lose their left tackle taylor the one to uh, an acl tear that is a devastating loss mm -hmm. lamar jackson philip rivers Kirk Cousins, Jimmy Garoppolo. <laughs> Jason, are you shaking your head at Phillip Rivers? No, I'm shaking my head at Lamar Jackson, ah. having 186 passing yards. Now, he had a phenomenal fantasy game because he rushed for over 100 yards, scoring his bonkers for quarterbacks when you do that. But I'm so disappointed in this Ravens offense as a whole. Mark Andrews, Hollywood Brown. If you're passing for 186 yards, it doesn't matter if you're good. On the it's year, such a tiny pie. On the year, his average right now. Jack is Doyle disagrees. One hundred eighty-nine passing yards per game. One point seven touchdowns per game. Mm -hmm. Distribute among all your pass catchers those bountiful numbers. Yeah, that's a bummer. So, uh, might have to change some expectations there. Across the board, Kirk Cousins. This was garbage <laughs> time. I mean, this was pure and utter. <laughs> <laughs> Did I hit 55? I don't know. I didn't. Can I blame a producer for that? Sure. Oh, wow. How Always. dare you? How dare you, Maybe there. that was 55 minutes worth of garbage time? Uh, that, it, that was the tie in. There. It that was much, on purpose. Pretty much was. Kirk Cousins came out and he, he had negative fantasy points for quite a bit of this matchup. Three early interceptions will usually do that. He was awful. But then it was like, oh. He's going to have to throw yeah. for the rest of the game and had a great fantasy output. Justin Jefferson. Oh, my. Jefferson's very good. And then uh, Rivers did have a nice game. 29 yes. for 44, 371 and three against Cincinnati. Had to actually come back. Yeah, and did it. Got it done. All right, at the running back position, oh. Derrick Henry. Winter, winter came early. There was report of snows in Minnesota. That means the Yeti. Was unleashed. So wait, if there's snow just anywhere in the country? That's that, right. Well, because snow means that winter is here. It fuels him even if yes. it's thousands of miles away? Yes. I didn't a, know that. You you need to research on Yetis. I, I clearly do. Learn I, up. I, I'm sorry, Mike. 22 for 2, 12 and 2 says you're right. Says it's statistically accurate. Uh, monster game for Derrick Henry. Just unbelievable performance. Mm -hmm. it caught a couple passes. The overtime play. How well coached is that team, too? I oh, just Rabel's so good. I'm just so impressed with them. And then taking the shot, you know, it's easy for us in hindsight to criticize every play call, right? Super easy. I mean, it's cake. And so when you have third and goal from the five and you direct snap to Tannehill, all the refrain, you can hear them all. If that fails, it's... Oh, you mean to Henry? Uh, to Henry. What did yep. I say? Tannehill. Tannehill. Oh, sorry. That's to Henry. usually That's what, do yeah, direct yeah, snap that to is, Tannehill. That makes sense. 
to Henry. And I can hear it all. What a decision. He fails there, and it's right. uh, gimmicky plays and stupid. Why don't you have – Tennell's had this great game, and you, how are you not throwing on third down? And then he scores, and you're a genius. But great play call, great player, and uh, we'll see how great next week against Pittsburgh because Pittsburgh is playing outstanding football, but they lost Devin Bush. So maybe – Sure. It's not like you're benching Derrick Henry. I don't even know why it's a conversation. What do you make of DeAndre Swift? Uh, it's tough. He was uh, a player that I highlighted on Sunday Live of, you know, just uh, don't forget what happens a lot with rookies, especially a rookie running back. He, he was in a timeshare. The vet, Adrian Peterson, was the guy. But then they had the bye week. The bye week teams go and they start shifting things around. They start figuring out where their young players can fit in and do more. Now, they're – the snap carries were or snap totals were very very close between DeAndre Swift and AP 29 for Swift 27 for Adrian Peterson but we saw DeAndre Swift get a lot of work on the snaps he was actually on the field 18 total opportunities and then he came through in a big way hopefully hopefully this is a great sign for more DeAndre Swift moving forward but this isn't like I don't think he just took over the, the job. The fact that this comes after a bye week is very important to me. You you've got three carries, five carries, zero carries, four carries, bye week, and then fourteen carries. This right. is a player they are, you know, actively getting more involved. He's in. the future of the running back. Absolutely. For them. So uh, you you've got to keep your eyes on him. Nice to see the opportunities jump up to eighteen. Yes. Couple starts of the week had nice weeks. Ronald Jones, Miles Gaskin, Jones. If you're not starting him at this point. You're missing out on 100-yard games each and every week, and he's running ferociously. That's how I would describe it. He is yeah. The question is, aggressive. when Fournette comes back, has Ronald Jones cemented the job, or will all of a sudden he lose 10 carries a game to Fournette? There is only wet cement in Tampa Bay at the running back position. There is no cementing. He could have run for 23 for 800 yards, and it would still be like you don't pick up a blitz pickup and let Brady get hit in the back of the knee – and you get pulled off for two drives. So there's always that risk, but I don't know what else you could have done over the last three weeks for Ronald Jones to right. earn that role and the confidence of fantasy players. Yeah, you, I think you have to continue to start Ronald Jones, even if Fournette is active and healthy, until proven otherwise. And James Conner keeps being James Conner, 20 for 101 and yep. 1. Uh, not really involved in the passing game, but... Didn't need to be. It does, yeah, this team is playing great. So uh, at that point, you know... You can lean on James Conner. And Miles Gaskin. Oh, the gas man. I think he looked the best he's looked in this game. Thank you, Jets. But he did what he was supposed to do. I uh, I credit Le'Veon Bell for that performance for Miles Gaskin. He's like, oh, man, they were they were trying to get someone to replace me. I better play a little stronger. Huh? Oh, 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 because when they were, yes, I, I followed Yeah, they them. were flirting the Dolphins with uh, were replacing him. I think, him. I think you threw us off because they were playing against the Jets, yeah. so we kind of got a little confused, but you were right on point. Yeah. yeah, yeah great see, work, Jason. Great sense. work, sir. Before we move on to the wide receiver studs of the week, want to thank today's sponsor, Mac Weldon. Fellas, Mac Weldon is where it's at. They got all kinds it's of- the Mac attack. Oh, the Mac attack is back, Jack. Like the- <laughs> It's a it's a clothing company. They've got underwears. They've got sweats. They've got everything you need to be comfortable. And that's what it is all about. The three of us have a lot of Mack Weldon gear. I'm wearing some right now. I am as well. <laughs> and at home, I've got a luxurious pair of sweats and a hoodie. Like, winter is coming. Sitting out on the porch in my Mack Weldon gear. I've never been more comfortable. Keeping me warm. And they promise comfort. A consistent fit. They've got all the essentials, socks, shirts, hoodies, underwear, polos, active shorts. Uh, you got to jump on there and see everything that they've got. They've got something for you. There's a wide range of customized fabrics that can keep up with you no matter what your day looks like. And they've got Weldon Blue, Mac Weldon's free loyalty program. Uh, level 1 gets you free shipping for life. Once you reach level 2 by spending 200 bucks, you get 20% off every order for the next year. You Go, just trust us. Go check it out, and you can get 20% off your first order. Visit MacWeldon.com slash footballers. Enter promo code footballers. That's MacWeldon.com slash footballers. Promo code footballers for 20% off. Mac Weldon reinventing men's basics. Upgrade your underwear game. Mm. 
And we also want to thank Navy Federal Credit Union. Navy Federal membership is open to veterans from all branches of the military and their family members, too. You could join over one and a half million veterans that Navy Federal serves and enjoy 24-7 exceptional service, powerful products created with you and your life goals in mind. If you're thinking about getting a car, you can go on there, you know, cruise into a monthly payment that you can afford using their loan calculator before you apply. You know, applying is super easy. You could do it on their mobile app. You can go online or by phone. It is super fast. You can get a decision in seconds. Right now, rates are as low as 1.79% APR. At Navy Federal, the members are the mission. They're insured by NCUA, open to the armed forces, the DOD, veterans, and their families. Credit and collateral subject to approval. Rates subject to change that are based on credit worthiness. Rate available for new vehicles. Message and data rates may apply. Visit NavyFederal.org for more information. All right, let's jump into the wide receiver studs, guys. I have some really bad news. Mm, what's that? And I know it's going to affect you the same way it affects me. But I went and I looked at my dynasty team, mm -hmm. and there's absolutely nobody that I can trade to acquire Justin Jefferson. <laughs> there's just no way I can get him. And I love this kid. 11 targets, 9 catches, 166 and 2. It is now the third time in four games he's been over the hundo mark. And he's got one of the best touchdown dances yes. in recent memory. I yes. I don't know what it is about that weird little tap dance uh, eyeglasses it's, thing, but uh, it's great. I want to see it like right now. I want to go pull it up because I just enjoy it. It just gets me gets me hyped. I can't imagine how good it's going to be in two weeks because he's got the bye next week, and he's going to work on it a little bit more. Uh, won't score you any fantasy points, but he's been outstanding. And uh, the question here, is he a top 15 wide receiver rest of season, Justin Jefferson? He's I mean, right that's a tough the, line, yeah, right, was, even though he's been great. I was going to say, he's on the cusp there. He's still the two for his team. I do think with the bye week coming, I've, I've said this before, Minnesota is not a bad team, and I think they'll come out of the bye a little stronger. So I, I would say just past wide receiver 15. Let's put but it I, another way. Must start. Sure, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a wide receiver too, rest of season. Julio Jones played. Two Leo Jones. Sorry, two Leo Jones. Ten targets, eight for 137, and two. Two touchdowns. You did it, Julio. They oh. said it couldn't be done, but that, you did it. That Matt Ryan Julio stack. How'd that feel, Brooks? <laughs> How did oh, that feel? Oh, no. Was yeah, that yeah. Dynasty? Sure was. Did you get a loss, Brooks? Well, T TBD. I've uh, got Zeke and DeAndre Hopkins going tonight. Okay, so we'll and then what do you need to make up? I want to. I want people at home following along. Do you want to look that up for me? I will look that up. Do some mathematics. Let us know. I want to. I'm going to be rooting for you, Brooks. I know that. I'm not rooting for Champ Champ over here. That's for darn Dude, sure. Brooks' team is so good. He's though. got a great dynasty. You are team. currently undefeated. Is that right? Yes, sir. Oh, well then, congratulations. On the undefeated record? Yeah, on your undefeated record. Yeah, that stack. Um, did you think about not playing Matty Ice, or was that once you knew Julio was in, it was done deal? Once Julio was in, it was a done deal. My my alternative was Carson Wentz against Baltimore, so it, it, was, it was Matt Ryan no matter what. I think one of the strangest things in Dynasty Leagues to pay attention to after you've done it for year after year after year is just the, the way you look at fantasy quarterbacks and what you – end up having to pay to acquire them and how you know when Carson Wentz was acquired a couple of years ago it was like locked and loaded done deal or parts of yesterday's game I was like is Jalen Hurts coming into this game right um oh I no forgot. guarantees I forgot to have Stefan Dix going oh as well. really oh, yeah. oh. no he's he is <laughs> absolutely you do, in the did game did you do the math I need 53 points between the three players. Oh, that's doable. Oh, that's yeah. super oh, doable. Oh, that's doable. I, I got something much. to look forward <laughs> to tonight. I talked way too much trash for that line. <laughs> I don't like it. Oh, oh, no. Let's go, Brooks. Kill. Let's get it done. All right. Will Fuller, he's getting it done each and every week. Six for 123 and a touchdown. Shoot, I'm going to lose. What? <laughs> 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 I'm looking at this lineup. I'm like, oh, Diggs. Hopkins and Zeke, and all you need is like forty points. Oh, yep. Congratulations on your six and zero team. Oh, now it's the now it's the pre apology yeah. or the uh, concession. You gonna all get right. a pizza delivered? Like Maybe last, we'll, like we'll last look time? into that. We'll look into that. Sometimes Jason uh, pre congratulates Brooks by buying him a pizza and seeing what happens. Did that work for you last time? Uh, Champ Champ says what? <laughs> oh, all right. All right. I want to talk about Will Fuller. All right. Yes. Will Fuller is currently sitting 
as the wide receiver six on the season. Will Fuller was knocked out injured against Baltimore. He did not have any targets or receptions in that game. If you omit that game, he has scored in four straight. He has been over 100 yards in three of five games. The one game where he didn't score, he was eight for 112. And 11 targets, eight targets, seven targets. This is why I was highlighting him last year or last week of saying the 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 overall feeling of Will Fuller is it had not had not caught up yes. to the actual production of Will Fuller because week two he went out and so it's oh it's the same old Will Fuller yep. he's just gonna get hurt and look Will Fuller has a very storied uh, injury history he could get hurt again that's something that could happen but the dude is balling out he is the number one for Deshaun Watson and Deshaun Watson is is finally erupting and having monster fantasy output I mean the 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 window is probably closed now like this will be the week that finally people are actually bought in on Will Fuller so I mean we we need to respect the man respect what Will Fuller is doing right now this is what you wanted to see I mean this is why I went and spin up to get him in dynasty and hoped and prayed he'd stay healthy and the sentiment you're talking about it wasn't just week 2 he also had the hamstring injury before last week's game that made everybody afraid to play him but uh, isn't he a free agent after this year? I will you double check that. that? Yeah. I think that'll be interesting to see what they choose to do. Brandon Cooks has been great, though. I don't want that to get buried. Brandon Cooks, the last two weeks, has been outstanding. I believe he, he caught nine of nine targets. Yes, he unretired. Yes. <laughs> and and what's crazy with Fuller is that he's been consistent. It's not some three touchdown game with two hundred yards that's inflating the numbers outside of the week where he literally missed, you know, almost the entire game. He's been a top twenty-eight wide receiver. That was his. That was his worst week, and that was against Pittsburgh. So he's he's just been he's been great. And I wonder if Will Fuller and James Conner just gave us all the pump fake. Mm. You know what I mean? We're all worried about the injuries. You come out and you start the year, and it's like, oh, same old, same old. And now they're just getting it done. Yeah, you you You're are saying that out loud. Those scares the crap out of me. <laughs> It's uh, like week seven coming up. You got to roll with it. You are correct, Andy. Will Fuller is – he's on his fifth-year option yeah. right now. So he will be a free agent or franchised by the Houston Texans. Yeah, that'll be interesting to see what they do. This is a big year for him yes. in terms of his future. A.J. Brown, two more touchdowns. Yep, very good. Dominant. Uh, Travis Fulgham, 10 targets, six for 75 and a touchdown. This is three straight weeks of fantasy relevance. Has the Giants in Dallas, I mean, at this point in time, we're supposed to get Deshaun Jackson back on Thursday, and I don't care one bit when it comes to whether I play Travis Fulgham. He seems to have established himself as the X right now. Uh, I've seen beat reporters talk about the fact he's going to yes. stay there even if Alshon comes back. What's your perspective on Fulgham after what you've seen? I I saw the same reports saying that as long as Fulgham keeps producing, he will be the starting wide receiver, so... You're playing him, and the Giants and Dallas, those are two juicy matchups. Jason, Chase Claypool, oh, four, four targets, yes. four catches, another rushing touchdown. He is uh, physically dominant on the field. He's one of those guys that, you know, he's taller and faster and strong. You know, this is the second week in a row where he's had a rushing touchdown as well. They get on the goal line. And it's really tough with his length and speed to stop a jet sweep from getting in the end zone. And you combine that with the fact that you have James Conner and it's it's just another weapon. I, I think he uh, has cemented himself as someone that you're going to start. I know that the matchup was great, right? We, we were saying before the week that the Browns, you want to play um, guys against the Browns, but uh, even in other matchups, he he just he's looked great, and it wasn't you know it, I, well, didn't he have a really good week one, just a bomb reception. It might have been week two, but I know what you're talking about. Yes, so we've seen it. Yeah, it was week two. He had uh, 88 yards. I I, th I think he's the real deal, and he's really made Juju. I don't know Man. if he's the reason for. It's on like Juju. it the what we have seen from Juju, where the the production has just evaporated is it's wild I, I know there's you know Juju was a, a very contested uh like polarizing high, polarizing high emotional uh when you talk about him uh during the off season. 
but he was still a 1400 yard receiver it was the questions were can he be the number one and that's that's a was a fair discussion to have but for a 1400 yard receiver to just vanish into thin air is absolutely mind-boggling I have no idea and what's happening with Juju and he's it's not that he's off the field he's still running a ton of routes he's just not we have targets we have five games already because they had the bye week already and you have him playing 81 percent of snaps and he's on pace for 620 total receiving yards it's mind-boggling man and and here here's the headline they 100% do not need Juju Smith-Schuster to be successful on this team. James Washington is giving you weekly production. Deontay Johnson looks like an emerging star. Chase Claypool, you've seen the headlines. Eric Ebron involved in the passing game. You know, Mike, you made the Pittsburgh wide receivers your start of the week. He Big Ben only threw 22 passes in this game. That's a, career, uh, a season low for him. Mm. So you still had production from Washington and Claypool, but – they don't need him right now. Yeah. They just don't. He He's still going to be good for the occasional touchdown. But yardage-wise, I believe coming into the week, he hadn't surpassed you know 50-something yards in any game. Um, yeah, it, it's and he's not going to probably be there after this year. I can't imagine what he believes about himself being able to point to the resume in the 1,400-yard season and what that would equate to from what Pittsburgh wants to pay a wide receiver. Those things are not going to come together. Yeah. All right, T. Higgins, this was impressive. The rookies are, are really breaking out. Six for 125. Uh, Higgins and a little bit of an unretirement for A.J. Green in this game. Yeah, how was A.J. Green not on this list? I mean, A.J. Green had eight catches. He did. He was he was usable. He was, uh, he was usable. <laughs> he had 11 targets. Okay, so he had 11 targets, eight for 96. That's in, a good game. In our league of record, that's 13.6 fantasy points. That ain't no stud muffin. That's a that's a solid game, but that's no stud muffin. Is you, it, you don't break 100 yards or get a touchdown. You don't get talked about in the stud muffins. I guess no, in the, no, no, no. I said a little unretirement. A baby. Like, he took a few steps outside the facility. I know we have two games left, but he's currently the wide receiver 14 on the on the week. It was a very that's low a scoring good game. week. So, so isn't you, context so everything? A, Didn't we establish context yes. everything compared to zero AJ Green? This is a stud muffin let's game. Be, let's be happy for AJ Green. I you did it, fella. I refuse. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> tight end studs this week. Kittle. He did his thing. We talked about Trey Boo Boo and uh, Anthony Ferk, sir. Nobody played him, but he was eight for one thirteen and a touchdown. There's no real headline there i mean he's like i said he scored before he's a really hard work sir uh yeah <laughs> jason start of the week darren fell seven for uh seven targets six for 85 and a touchdown um last week as soon as akins went out i was saying get fells out there jason this week started him signed him played I him endorsed him and he, to. and he was great <laughs> are we gonna bring that up i didn't sure. think we were gonna bring that up yeah, I did. Uh, I I signed Fells for our league of record um, to play him. He was my start of the week, and then he's on he was on my bench. I didn't put him in my lineup. <laughs> he had a really good game. Oh shoot! Yeah, I. Uh, now you you didn't tilt for the like the whole day. The rest of my day was ruined. Uh, I had a bad attitude. <laughs> I went home with a bad attitude. I went to bed with a bad attitude. But at least for uh, all the Foot Clan that started Darren Fells, at least you got him. Uh, and then we had a water bet, a, a tight end water bet, Rob Gronkowski versus Irv Smith uh, Jr. And Gronkowski had a nice game, five for 78 and a touchdown. Irv, Almost had two. Irv had a nice game too, four catches. I think, uh, how many yards did he have? Of that Ir Irv uh, Smith? It bigger. was like 50. 50 oh, it was? Oh, you sneaky snook. So, uh, nice Game from both of those players. That's how water bets are supposed to go. It's like yeah, where they the both two good well. games and one was better. I agree, and so we'll see. There's there's some trouble at tight end, and maybe both of those players are viable moving forward. We'll have the waiver show tomorrow. We'll talk about some options for your team. Stinkers of the week presented by Odor Eaters.
All right, we've got quarterbacks that uh, stink, Oof. stink, stunk. Oof, man. Uh, Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers. What happened? 16 for 35? I do not know what happened. The The Packers came out on fire. It was 10 to nothing. There was also an Aaron Rodgers rushing touchdown that I don't know what happened where he dove forward and his knee hit the ground, but a defender hadn't touched him. It should have been a rushing touchdown, but then it ended up going to Aaron Jones, and then Aaron Rodgers proceeded to do nothing after that. Once he threw that pick six, he was a little shell-shocked, came, came back, throws another quick uh, interception, and it was like every pass from then on out looked weird from Rodgers. Him and Adams were out of sync. He was yep. overthrowing guys. It was just it was a weird game, and afterwards Aaron Rodgers talked about we needed to get our butts kicked so we can stop, you know, sniffing our own, mm -hmm. our own farts over here. Yeah, I – it's just so unexpected. The NFL is crazy. Every week you get two or three games where you, you're like, what? What happened? Yeah. And Rodgers gets Adams back and puts up a turd. Yep. And um, makes it a little bit harder to think he's locked and loaded every single week. Teddy Bridgewater, this was not, a, was not a great game against Chicago. The Bears. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, they're not impervious. And then uh, Big Ben, not a good week. Like I said, only 22 pass attempts in this game. Uh, and then Matthew Stafford, not a great one, 223-1. and one. He had, uh, I think they had, what, three rushing touchdowns on the one. Three times, you know, Kenny Galladay pulled down on the one. Yeah. Uh, Peterson Swift had two touchdowns. Uh, it was an unfortunate output result for fantasy purposes, but do take solace in the fact that of how good the team looked. The offense looked very good, and Matthew Stafford was finally bombing the the ball down the field again after the week of rest. Yeah, yeah. All right, running back disappointments. Oh, there man. are quite a few. Oh, man. Uh, Alexander Madison, this, ten, 10 for 26. This one hurt a lot. He uh, is not Dalvin no, Cook. No, he is not Dalvin Cook. I was hoping that we could get 80-something percent of Dalvin Cook. The matchup was there. Uh, the, the game took a turn for an even better game script of, of a team that needs to come back and for Alexander Madison seeing some of those sweet, you know, just check downs, get some, get him the PPR bump. And then, no, it was, it was in fact, Amir Abdullah was the passing downs running back for the Minnesota Vikings. Who are you more disappointed uh, in the rhetoric around the week from coaching staff saying, Hey, we don't change anything right. about Madison or is it Madison himself for not having a good performance? It's Madison. It's Madison for sure. Sounds like you're mad. I am. Oh. I am mad. As son. You're mad, son. I'm mad, son, because he stunk. And, the you know, 10 carries against the Atlanta defense should not result in 26 yards. Uh, maybe if he did better with those carries early in the game, they're not, they're, you know, and they're able to run the ball. They're, they're not throwing as many interceptions. They're in the game. Uh, this, this was a huge disappointment from Alexander Madison, a player we've waited two years for to see this game, yeah, and and it was on the back of a second half the week prior. Like, look, Madison doesn't suck. He just flat out doesn't. We, we saw it the week prior. This was a terrible game, and it sucked, and well, I blame him for it. it. There's a bye week in all reports from Minnesota. I have the number at 99.99% that Dalvin Cook will be back on the field. This was what you get from Alexander Madison. And the hard part is... He's rostered everywhere, mm -hmm. and now if Cook goes out again, you're not guaranteed. Cream Hunt, he had a hard time against Pittsburgh. The whole Cleveland offense looked like it was what we've seen, not what we were hoping for. So yeah. 13 for 40. He ran hard. Um, Baker probably should not have played. He was he, he. You saw it last week. He got hurt. He had the rib problem. He was shaking his arm for like the whole second half of last week, and then Pittsburgh. They are they are tenacious about getting to the quarterback. So Baker had a a really rough game. He did not play the whole game, right? Yeah, yeah he, he came they, off the they field took him out too. Eventually, uh, Todd Gurley, uh, twenty for forty seven. When he doesn't score, well, Mike, I loved what you said last week because it uh, it made sense. Todd Gurley was Kenyon Drake with touchdowns, mm -hmm. and he did not get the touchdown this week. He does get a lot of work though. And uh, so he's still somebody you're going to start. Yeah, you've got Detroit and then Carolina the next Ooh, two weeks. All right. Yeah, he's fine. All right. Here, we need to have a discussion here. Sure. Antonio Gibson, 
I thought he'd take it to 100 this week. He uh, he did not. Nine for 30, five targets, four catches. J.D. McKissick, mm-hmm. 39 snaps. Antonio Gibson, 27 snaps. Yep. Sometimes the dream is not the reality. And right now, um, look, the one thing I brought up about McKissick in the offseason was the fact that this head coach brought him in. It wasn't, it wasn't the previous regime. At this point in time, it seems very difficult to trust Gibson on a week-to-week basis because of all the inconsistency in the offense and the snap counts are not all going his way. Yeah, the, the, snap, what are you guys counts, thoughts? the snap counts are not there, and McKissick was – McKissick was the one concern I had for Antonio Gibson like, during the offseason. I wasn't worried about Peterson, wasn't worried about Bryce Love. I felt that Gibson could surpass those guys on the depth chart, but the passing work, McKissick was the issue. Washington, through uh, it, it's not a shock, a shock to any of us. They are bad. They are they are not a good football team right now, and when they are trailing, it's J.D. McKissick, and so that that's where the coaching staff has the trust. And I don't see that changing. Like Dallas, they're going to be losing to Dallas. Then they get to play the Giants again. Maybe they can have a better performance against them. But it's Antonio Gibson ha- probably has to go to your bench for the next couple of weeks. I mean, Gibson did have five, you know, five targets in this yeah. game. Five in the last three weeks. Uh, every single week, he's getting five targets, uh, averaging about you know north of fifteen opportunities a game. I feel like there's enough opportunity being given to him that you can still take the shot at a breakaway touchdown because of his athleticism, but obviously he's been, you know, disappointing the running back 25, 28, and 25 three of the last four weeks. Well, and I should highlight the actual numbers for McKissick. Eight targets, eight targets, six targets the last three weeks. Mm-hmm. So, um, and he had 14 opportunities, so it's it's tough. I mean, you have to make more of your opportunities in a bad situation. Like, you don't have the room for sure. error. You don't have the goal yep. line opportunities. I think if you get at the goal line, Gibson's going to get the ball more often than not. Agreed. So um, it almost feels a little bit like starting David Montgomery week to week. That's w- fair. Where Montgomery, if he can find his way into the end zone, you're like, all right, I guess I'm glad I played him this week. So I would love to see that big breakaway touchdown from Gibson, though. That'd be nice. Uh, we all would. All right. Uh, Cam Makers didn't touch the ball. <laughs> We're going to get him more involved. You willing to just dump him? Right now? Uh, Roster spots are at a premium. Bye weeks. Prob- COVID. Probably. I mean, yeah, I, think, I think I'm willing to cut him. I think you you might have to. Henderson looks great. He does. And you know who looks terrible? Malcolm Brown. I mean, every time they gave him the ball, it's like. Slow down, Brown. Yeah. Mm. I was like, what are you doing? How, how was it at least not the, the Henderson Acres one-two punch? All right. I Here's blooper cup. At the wide receiver position. Mm, Cooper Cup ended up 3-for-11 in this game. He had nine targets. He should have had two touchdowns. He had one blatant, like, in zone, two feet in, ball in his hand, should have been a touchdown. The other one, he broke free down the field and lost the ball in the lights or turning. I, you know, you can say what you want. Maybe he should have caught it. Maybe he shouldn't have. But opportunities, yes. Execution, none. Uh, I was going to say, at the, at the end of the day, what matters is – how it came about was the player bad is this worrisome for the future and it's not he had a terrible end result but you you can still rely on Cooper Cup the Rams were still trying to rely on him he should have had a good game and I think that's the point of this whole segment is trying to find players you're actually concerned about Mm -hmm. Evans and Godwin Evans I'm not worried about him but it was a disappointing performance this is what we've come to expect from Evans every once in a while he just Poof disappears. Two targets, one catch, no touchdowns this time. And then Chris Godwin. What is the what is the right way to think about Chris Godwin? Seven targets, five for 48. Um, better defense than Jameis had. No shootout situation. Well, and on top of that, you have you have a run game now. Like Ronald Jones looks fantastic. He he is a different player this year. The they are able to actually function on the ground where last year it was Jameis would it often put the team into a hole. They would have to climb out with the passing game. The running game really couldn't get things going on top of that. So everything went to Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. This is uh I think you do need to Nate, you don't I'm not gonna panic on these guys, but you do need to adjust expectations that game scripts are 
simply not going to be in their favor every single week. And I'm I'm a little bit more worried about Mike Evans. I think he's someone that you might be able to trade high based on the touchdowns he's had. Obviously, bad week, so it it feels like it might be difficult. But I will say this: if you look at the games where Chris, you know, Chris Godwin's played in three games, here are Mike Evans lines in those three games one reception for two yards two receptions for two yards and one reception for 10 yards uh touchdowns came in in some of those but sure. it's it's one of those things where you mix in the game script you mix in the defense the running game and Chris Godwin and all of a sudden Mike Evans is going to ha he still he'll still have his big down the field big plays big games but I think more often than not he's going to not be very good one of the things i think you brought up in the offseason jason was the idea that you're drafting evans and godwin at their absolute ceiling with where they were going in fantasy drafts and it wasn't that they're not talented it was that they needed to do what they did last year to justify the draft position and any changes to this offense aren't going to bring them upwards most right. likely um that's pretty compelling the splits with godwin in the lineup that does mm -hmm. make me want to maybe shop mike evans because touchdowns, those are tough to predict. And Gronkowski getting involved, I mean, maybe it takes him a little bit of time. And all of a sudden, that's another red zone weapon that takes the, what, the one-yard Evans touchdowns right. away? Interesting. Allen Robinson, uh, nine no. targets, five for 53. No worries there. Nope, no no worries. worries about Devontae Adams. Nope. No worries about DJ Chark, in my mind. 14 targets. Uh, Minshew's been real up and down, accuracy-wise. He has. Seven for 45 for Chark. Didn't even think he was going to play, so yeah, no re-injury. He did not get re-injured. Keelan Cole actually came through with a, a pretty big game. Uh, just there was, a, there was a connection problem with DJ and Gardner for this particular game. Beckham, who I loved coming into the week with how P Pittsburgh was 28th against opposing fantasy-wide receivers. I don't know if there was any downfield targets to go around. I mean, the one thing I noticed different about Keenum compared to Baker like if I went into the game as a quarterback and um, I had to wear a flak jacket and my ribs were like destroyed, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. one of my hot tips would be the Jimmy Garoppolo game script where the ball was out of my hands. It's into the, uh, it's to the Kareem Hunt. It's to the screen game. It's, hey, it's first read, let it fly. Don't hit me in the ribs. Baker just stood there the whole game. He never let it go. I don't know what happened. You saw several plays once Case Keenum came in where it was three step drop, release the ball, and it's like, keep why weren't you? Maybe why the Minka you trying Fitzpatrick that? interception made him gun shy to, to just sling it. I don't know. It was gross. And as a result, only four targets for Beckham. I believe one of his two catches came from Keenum. Um but they brighter days ahead, I think, for this team. They'll be they'll be able to establish their offense against Cincinnati and probably Las Vegas because of the running game. Pittsburgh is a different beast in terms of trying to uh, match them and be able to get it done in the passing game first. So I'm not doing anything with Beckham. Are you guys worried about Beckham? He, uh, I'm, I'm not worried. It's just that you have to understand this is this is part of the of the Baker Mayfield and the Cleveland Browns experience for Beckham. Yeah, it's it it is what you're going to get the rest of the season. Mm -hmm. Good games mixed with bad games. We could bring up Marquise Brown in the same breath. You're going to have uh, p possibilities of big plays, and you're going to have some bad games. He had thirty percent of the yards. That's usually phenomenal. Right. I would love to have that percentage. Yes, but if the yards week in and week out are going to be 189 passing yards from you know Lamar Jackson. <laughs> You're you're gonna need sixty percent of the yards to have a great game. That's not uh, probably not, gonna need a touchdown. Yes, you're gonna need a touchdown, and and so, um, but both of those players, Beckham Brown, they have uh, big upside, big play ability. They're playmakers, so you can you could throw them in your lineup and hope for the good games. I mean, there's not that many wide receivers in fantasy that are just week in and week out consistent. So you go for high upside guys. All right, Juju, four targets, two for six. I'm going to ask a tough question here. Do you cut Juju Smith-Schuster, forget oh. about the name, and move on? You know, there's an option to go get a Travis Fulgham. There's an option to go get, you know, a player like, I don't know, Brandon Cooks. And here's Juju with the big name, and there's Man. not going to be a forever time to cash in on the name. You guys know how I feel, so I want to see where you're at. 
Uh, we, we've said this before. We said this early in the season with A.J. Green, even though he felt droppable. When you have a big name, you don't drop them, you trade them. You And, and even if you're going to, you know, so, someone out there in a package deal, when you just throw in, just use it as a throw-in, uh, Juju, to, to upgrade somewhere else, I think he can push the needle on someone wanting to take a chance on him, on the big name, on the production. Be, but what you're saying, Andy, is... You know, who has a better rest of season? Fulgham or Juju Smith Schuster? Fulgham, who's still on some waiver wires or Juju. That's not an easy question to answer. And, you know, so you're going to get a lot more from Juju in a, in a trade. It's a good point with the trade. Uh, that's a way to cash in on names. Get a little bit of the, it's like getting the value back, not trading, you know, not getting zero back on your investment from mm -hmm. the draft. You get like a partial return. Like, get out while you can right. to stop loss. You got to know when to <laughs> hold them and know when to <laughs> fold them. Yeah. 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 We'll try them all. We'll get <laughs> full ham, we'll, we'll millennium Fulgham. We'll try them all. If you got one, send it in. We're, we're still not there. Send it in to Fulgham at fantasyfootballers.com. <laughs> uh, is Julian Edelman done for fantasy football purposes? Yeah. I think you might argue for NFL purposes. He <laughs> Gross. I mean, it was I like he's hurt. He started the year. He Give it everything he got. He gave it everything he had. Had his career high in week 279 yards, and he just looks beat up. He's man. leading the NFL in drops, and he hasn't mm. played as many weeks as other other wide right. receivers. He also had the bye week to get healthy, came back out there, saw him warming up. I was like, it, maybe he's back. It is worth noting and it really pumping the brakes on the entire Patriots' performance, whether that's Cam, Damian Harris, Julian Edelman. They had – Two of their offensive linemen go on the COVID IR list. The entire offensive linemen shift around. Nobody was playing their normal position. And so, you know, you, you saw Denver control that game. Part of that was because the Patriots offensive line was unexpectedly trashed um, as far as, you know, they didn't have the time to prepare and really plan. And so Denver did it better then. <laughs> yeah. In yeah. that in that two week span, and if you take Edelman, if Edelman is hurt or if he's washed, which he could absolutely be, good luck, Cam. Yeah. Good luck, Cam. Leaning on Nikhil Harry and Demir Bird. No, there have been several offenses that have actually leaned on Demir Bird in recent years, and they have all been very bad. Well, they they are in the running for that number one pick, though. Usually, yeah. Wasn't that Arizona? That is correct. Yeah, with uh, Josh Rosen leaning on Demir Bird to make his career. Yeah. Jamison Crowder got 13 targets, but only caught seven of them. Come yeah. on, Jamie. Flacco effect. If he's if he's in a full PPR, you get seven receptions, you're okay. I would trade him now. Sure. Rashad I'd... Perryman came back in this game. Yeah. The team is spiraling. If you can cash in on these big weeks, I don't know. That that'd be my thought. But I don't I don't mind. I don't know if anyone's going to trade for Jamison Crowder. That's a fair point. Buy. That's like, a fair point. Crowder is Crowder's just he's he's the perfect depth piece for your bench. Tight ends. Are you worried about any of these bad performances, Mark Andrews? You're gonna ha you're gonna have a lot of. He is not a Kittle. He is not a Kelsey mm -hmm. because of what we've talked about with Lamar Jackson. You're gonna have big games and bad games. Yeah, you hope for that. He's he's probably the highest two touchdown probability player at the tight end position, and yet not gonna have the yards. Mike Gesicki though, this was horrible. Yes, uh, and Adam Shaheen was involved. Yeah, I think you might want to look for a different option from Gesicki. That is so disappointing. Goose sicky. That's that's <laughs> utterly it's disappointing. Funny. Yeah. Robert Tanyan. Uh not yet. Do I wouldn't move on from Tanyan yet. This is not really the game to evaluate the Green Bay Packers offense on. Evan Ingram. Done. Oh yes. Oh yeah. Sorry. Yeah, you done? Jimmy uh, Jimmy Grandpa, eight targets. I don't think I'm done with Jimmy Grandpa with no, eight targets. No, you're yeah, yeah. Eric Ebron. Give up all hope. Yeah. yeah, Eric Ebron is is you know what the fifth option in the offense, so I I don't think you can rely on him. All right, stinkers of the week presented by Odor Eaters. Odor Eaters, the best in foot odor defense. Big time waiver wire show tomorrow after our double header tonight. We want to thank PristineAuction dot com for supporting the show. They have a special October giveaway. They are giving away a Russell Wilson signed Nike jersey. You can enter at pristineauction.com slash raffle. Pristineauction.com slash raffle. And if you sign up with a new account over there, make sure you use the code 
ballers to get a ten dollar credit. All right, that is it. You got to know when to hold them. You got to know when to fold them, guys. And it's time to fold them. All right. Back with waivers tomorrow. Absolutely. See you then, Foot Clan. Stay safe. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.